Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here at a very special location deep within the heart of Detroit, and it's all for a very good reason. And this is one of the reasons next to me. This is a 2025 Dodge Charger Daytona sedan. But before we get into this four door, new modernized muscle car, let's talk about what's going on here. So right off the bat, maybe a question mark came up over your head when I said 2025. If you have seen my first review that I already posted, that was about 2024. Here's the thing. A two-door Daytona Charger Coupe is gonna be available the first model year, which is 2024. Dodge decided to not only surprise all of the auto journalists here in Detroit, but also are now bringing, I'm sure, a big surprise to you that they're gonna offer the Dodge Charger Daytona as a two-door, but also as a four-door. So this is really gonna stop the arguments and the arm wrestling and everything else that's been going on debate-wise on whether a Charger should be two doors or four doors, you get to choose. But it won't be until model year 2025 when the four-door Charger Daytona will be available. But the great news is whether you like your muscle car to have two doors or whether you want your electrified muscle car to have four doors, no matter which way you go, you're gonna get the same performance, same great technology, and the all new style. Now, the Charger is really near and dear to Dodge's heart. It's been around since the 1960s. And even after the Charger met its demise, it came back. I remember back in the 1980s, the Dodge Charger came back and it was much different than the Chargers of the past. But guess what? It adapted. Now the Charger would once again disappear from Dodge's lineup, but then it came back in the mid 2000s and that's where we start to see the resurgence of what many people call muscle car era version 2.0. Now, the Charger name is going to stick around. Challenger, for now at least, is being retired. But that nameplate will be held on to by Dodge. But what I want to find out is, if you're looking for the future of the muscle car and you're ready to take that step, do you go two-door or do you go four-door with your muscle car? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this all-new Charger Daytona and find out. Right off the bat, I love the proportions, especially this part of the fender. It really has a nice flared appearance to it without it being anything that's just stuck on. I know there's still a lot of people out there that maybe don't understand with the previous generation wide bodies, they didn't like the way that the fenders were kind of just like stuck on. This, it all is one piece cohesive design and really gives it a lot of attitude from the front. Now, as we drop down, another thing that's really gonna separate a lot of these electric vehicles is gonna be lighting. And that's something that Dodge has been doing very well for quite some time now. So you're gonna get your full LED daytime running lamp that runs along the front of the vehicle. Of course, LED headlights. The thing that I think is gonna surprise most people is there's nothing really round on the front of this vehicle. Whereas if you look at a lot of the other EVs that we're familiar with, everything's rounded. This, we have nice sharp edges, especially with the way the R-wing, which came from the concept, is now in the actual production version. So you're gonna get that ultimate in airflow, but you're also gonna get that ultimate in design. And I really think that this brow makes the front of the vehicle. We continue across the front, you have a forward-facing camera, and look at the way the Fratzog badge is illuminated in there like it's floating. That's another part of that history of the Dodge brand, and especially when it comes to their muscle cars. And then on the lower portion, you're gonna have that nice, large, lower grille. It's interesting because it looks familiar, but it also looks different. And I think that's the key in the success of this vehicle is gonna be how Dodge has shaped things to look familiar and, and make people feel comfortable with it without turning away the diehard fans. And I'm definitely, 
from design, it looks spectacular. Now, in the belly of this beast, you have a 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is on a 400 volt chassis platform setup. Eight, the, the 800 volt will come with the Banshee, which guess what, is also gonna be available in model year 2025. But what's great about this is that you will still be able to get connected through direct connection and get different stage kits for this. For 2024, like I said in the previous video, stage two when you go scat pack, and this one is a scat pack, RT, scat pack, scat pack comes with that stage two, well over 600 horsepower, over 600 pound feet of torque. That's the performance that they're gonna bring. Now, as we rise up, I really think the way they did the hood area as well is another thing that's gonna attract people. Because if you notice, you have the body lines that come up with the bulge, and then everything goes towards the A pillars. Very similar to what you would find on the previous generation, but yet it's different. Of course, you have a motor up front, electric motor out back to give you an all wheel drive muscle car. So think about the grip that this thing is gonna give from a standstill. Now, when we come around the bend, of course, wheels and tires are always important, not only from a performance standpoint, but also from appearance. A lot of people don't give wheels enough credit when it comes to the appearance of a vehicle. Love the 20 inch wheel, that large V-spoke design, and then of course, we're gonna have some meaty rubber up front, 305s up front, and then larger rear tires out back. You have the new interpretation of the Rumble Bee. One of the things that, like I said, when it comes to feeling familiar about the design of the vehicle, those are things that help, help you feel familiar because the Rumble Bee has been around a lot longer than I've been around. So these are those touches. Coming down the side, you're still gonna get that same great silhouette. And I think that's what's gonna make the two-door successful, but also the four-door successful, is that silhouette of that low slung roof that comes into the lift back design on the four door, it really works. It works on the two door, it works on the four door. And you can clearly see how we have full functional four doors. There used to be an old saying, two doors too many. You never had a four door muscle car. Well, guess what? Dodge changed the way people viewed that for sure. And they're gonna continue to change people's minds when it comes to having four doors and having performance. You could have both. And what they're gonna do is, is give you the option for both. Love the way that they shape the door handles. Nice to see you just easily press and the door will swing open. And then of course, coming into the rear fender, that body line off the rear door into the rear fender. Of course, you got your charge port door. And then my favorite part is when you swing it around, you're gonna have this large gloss black deck lid spoiler. And then the other part of this puzzle is the racetrack lighting. And I like the way it's a little dark back here because I want you to be able to see that bright red racetrack lighting that they have with the frat zog fully illuminated, floating there in the center. And then they did a bang up job on this lower bumper area, really allowed it to be clean, but aggressive at the same time. Daytona is actually stamped into the back of the bumper so we don't have to put any extra badging and of course we're going to have that frat zonic sound system that that exhaust sound which they say is going to rival when it comes to loudness what a previous gen hellcat is and remember it's not just a speaker that they put under the back of the car it's a sound chamber and it works like a pipe organ and guess what i was at sema when Dodge, a couple of years ago, were just grabbing people off the floor, people thought they were being kidnapped or they had to go through some kind of security where they're gonna strip search them. Well, guess what? What they were asking them to do was listen to some sounds and identify what sounded like a muscle car. And that's where Dodge has created a new sound. So the sound that you heard from Dodge Speed Weeks with the concept vehicle is not the sound that is going to be with the production version. They've actually worked on it, 
they tweaked it and they listened to muscle car fans and owners to get a better sound. But like I said, for the Charger, Daytona 2025 will be the year you could get a four door. Let's go ahead, let's take a look, a deep dive look at the two door and get inside that one to see what are the big changes that they're bringing for this all new electrified muscle car. All right guys, so what's great about this whole movement with the new Charger Daytona is that, like I said, you could have a two door or you could have a four door. And I think that is something that is very, very smart to what Dodge is doing to make everybody happy. Cause that's a tough ask to do is to make everybody happy. So we started with the four door. Now I wanna show you the two door RT. So what do we got going on? At the front, just like on the four door, you're still gonna get your full LED lighting. Love the way it's got that LED drag strip that comes across the front. You have your R-wing, which is that functional piece that brings the air underneath and over. And then on the lower side, you're gonna have that functional grill. Now, one thing I don't know if, if uh, Steven could pick up is that you've got active shutters back there that's gonna open and close because remember, we have that 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack in the belly of this beast. And what's fascinating is one of the things that if you have not driven an EV yet, one of the things that you're gonna be blown away with this vehicle, I haven't even driven it yet, but I could tell you that you're gonna get blown away, is the center of gravity is lower. So the way that this vehicle handles is going to blow your mind, especially if you had a previous generation charger with this Charger Daytona. So something else to think about, and like I said, this is the RT. So you'll have your choice of RT, or you'll have your choice of scat pack. Eventually, model year 2025, you'll have the top dog for the time, which will be the Banshee. And who knows where Dodge is gonna take this electrification muscle car when it comes to performance levels as we move in the future. But love the way with this color and that black splitter along the bottom, just like on the four door, you're gonna have your frat zog with a forward facing camera and then working our way up. I think one of the things that I love about the front of the vehicle, and I'm gonna see if Steven can pick it up, is that nice flared fender. It's a smooth flare that gives it a little bit extra width. And then of course, tied in with the way that they shape the hood. It has that muscle car bulge that I think is gonna be very familiar and very unique to many of the fans out there. Now, coming around the bend, if you wanna see difference in wheels, here we have a different color, nice gunmetal metallic gray finish, large white spoke design all the way around with the fret zog badge in there. And then just like before, we're talking about a 20 inch wheel. Now on this particular one, you're looking at 275 on the width and a 40 series sidewall. Obviously when you go scat pack, you're gonna get a little bit larger of a tire footprint when it comes to front and rear of the vehicle. Still dual motor setup, but of course with this vehicle in its standard mode, you're looking around 315 mile range. So something to think about, if range is that important to you, you're gonna have some choices. But remember, at the end of the day, we're talking about muscle cars here. We're still talking about muscle cars and it's about, at the end of the day, the experience they provide and the performance that they give. Moving down the side, love the way they did the RT badge. A nice modern interpretation, road and track. It goes all the way back to the 60s. And nice to see it still on this modern Charger Daytona. You'll notice we have the gloss black mirror caps. And then the metallic in this blue color is just outstanding. I can't wait to see this color outside. That really is going to be something to change how this body of the car looks is just by the metallic flake and the exterior, but nice to have the option. Two door, we started with a four door. Here is your two door version. Let me go ahead, let's jump inside to give you an idea of what the Charger Daytona is about. Whether you go two door or four door, what type of new technology we have for your electric muscle. All right guys, we are inside this two door Dodge Charger 
Daytona. Now, the great news is whether you go two door or four door, you're going to get this all new interior. And I know some people are saying, well, Joe, what about horsepower? What about horsepower? With this vehicle having a stage one direct connection kit, because that's how it's going to come for the first model year, model year 2024, they'll be in dealerships by this summer. You're looking at 496 horsepower. Standard Dodge Charger Daytona RT is 335 horsepower. So that stage one direct connection kit really boosts up the ponies underneath the hood. But of course, I know the next question is, what about price? Still no word on pricing, but we will bring it to you. I want to show you the interior though, because they've made some big changes to the door panels. I love the way you have the ambient lighting, the contrast stitching, and you can see the concept car. You could see the previous generation charger in there, all nicely, cleanly done, and then a door pocket large enough for two Detroit hot dogs. Eh, make that five. You could actually put five hot dogs in there uh, with extra relish and uh, some sauerkraut and a bottle of Dr. Pepper. Now, going from the door panel to the dash, like I said, the materials, everything has been upgraded. The ambient lighting is ridiculous. I don't know if Steven can show the actual badge here, if he can illuminate that without hitting the top of the camera. There, Daytona. Nice to see that badge on the passenger side. And then guess what? This RT, you'll notice, has the standard 12.3 inch infotainment system screen. Nice, large infotainment system screen with all the different functions you could ever think of. Very easy to use, real knobs, which are great. And then you have down below USB-Cs, wireless charging, a place for four Snickers, pistol grip shifter for the direct drive transmission, cup holders, soft. I mean, they really did a great job on all of these materials. And then these are your standard seats. I really wanted to show you these seats. These are your standard low back seat. Now there will be an optional high back seat that I actually have in the other review I did of these Charger Daytonas. So I will leave the link of that one at the end of this review. So these are your standard seats, full power electrical assist, which is nice. And the bolstering has been improved from the previous gen. And this one does not have a glass roof. Optional will be a glass roof, which I actually have on that other review. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this RT Charger Daytona. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. This is a very special moment being able to sit inside this car, especially with it gonna be available by this summer. Now down below, you do have your seat controls. So easy to get to, especially that lower lumbar. I'm actually digging the standard seat. I like both seats. I think each one has a unique feel to it. So it's gonna be interesting to see what is most popular, the low back seat or the high back single back seat. That's going to be an interesting way to see how people option their Charger Daytonas. Steering wheel, they did a great job because what's awesome is that large digital display, which standard is 10.25, or you could get the larger 16 inch. The steering wheel does not block any of the information. So I think that that was really smart. And I like the way they just spell the Dodge name out instead of putting the Dodge um, romb rhombus logo there. Love the flat black, you got your power shot, which is an additional 40 horsepower for 15 seconds, your different drive modes, paddles for the regen braking, and then of course, a head up display as well, which will be optional. But nice to see the attitude adjustment lighting in here, 64 colors, think about it. Think about the attitude adjustment you needed when you were in elementary school and that one kid had the Crayola box of 64 different crayons with a sharpener in the back. Remember how you used to get pissed off? You used to cry because your parents wouldn't get you one? Well, guess what? You could, you could now make other people cry because you'll have 64 different colors of attitude adjustment lighting. But as much as I want to take this for a spin, it's not that time yet, but it will be happening soon for the first drive, so definitely stay tuned. But we need to wrap it up here from Motor City. Being able to share it with you has been extra special, but we gotta thank everybody at Dodge, everybody at Stellantis, for allowing us access to these vehicles before they are seen to the public world. But let me know what you think. If you're looking for that next step in the muscle car story 
a step with electrification, whether you're going full on BEV or you're thinking about and curious about what that Charger six pack is about being a muscle car hybrid, a performance hybrid, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. I know that the Dodge people wanna hear what you have to say. Put it in the comment section, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rise family. Of course, we need to give it up. Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He flew out, he woke up at 3.30 in the morning. He's making it happen. He's sweating a little bit, but you know what? Some hard work is really good for you, Stephen. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.